Welcome to the Coffee Talk Podcast. This is intended for informational purposes only and not to be used as a primary basis for investment decisions. Consult your financial professional before making investment decisions. Shannon Ross is a registered representative and MBA of Lighthouse Financial. Lighthouse Financial offers securities and advisory services through Cambridge Investment Research Advisories Incorporated. Member FINRA and SIPC. Shannon is CEO and Managing Financial Partner of Lighthouse Financial. Cambridge and Lighthouse Financial are not affiliated. And now, here's your host, Shannon Ross. Happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Talk. I am joined by my beautiful co-host, April Todd. Hello. Hello. Good morning. You have your fall colors on today. I do. I'm willing fall to get here. I like it. Hi, next Tuesday, 61. I'm hoping that pans out. I know that's not no, your you favorite. Like that more than I do, but that's okay. I do. It's 90 today, I, so I'm happy about it. I today. almost put a beanie on today to make it even more, and then I thought, I'll sweat. Oh, my, yes. It's, it's like 90 outside. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, I have been watching our show on YouTube more Me so than too. I listen to it too, but I've really enjoyed it. It's been fun. It is fun. I really, I, I, I honestly have listened to it m- more, multiple times, which I've never done. Really, because it like cheers me up. <laughs> Do you want to know? Do you want to know so why? Me, why? Because I cheer you up. I know. Maybe <laughs> that's why. I I like listen to it when I or watch it when I'm getting ready, and I'm like, oh, this puts me in a good mood. Oh, good. So I know when it puts you in a good mood. So you should watch tune the in. show. Tune into our YouTube <laughs> Copy channel. Talk podcast. Ring the bell. I know. Hit the bell. Oh, I'm, I'm still bad too. at that. I, I would. Do, I have to get better at it. That was better. That you was have better. to like. There's a hand position over the bell that oh has to a like. If you get position. too close, you don't maximize right the, the ringer. Anywho. You should ask me how my morning was. Well, I'm a little scared, too. <laughs> I know you've had a interesting week. It's been. So I'm a little scared, too, but I will since we're on camera. Week. Well, <laughs> so. I just I just made you. It would be rude now. How, how you was didn't. your morning? Well, it, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, it was one of those mornings where, so it, it has been a rough week. It's been a rough week. It's been a different week. Um, so it's one of those mornings where, you know, the electric toothbrushes? Oh, yes. I feel like I've shared my toothpaste <laughs> stories on here before. But you know when you, you're you in a hurry and maybe you're just a little off, you're just a little off a little bit and you forget to turn the toothbrush off before you take, like, so you take it out oh. of your mouth and it's so, it's like it all the toothpaste. It all over you. Everywhere. I'm so glad I washed my hair and, <laughs> yeah. And then I burnt my forehead with flat iron. Oh. I mean, like, it's, yeah. In a little bit, Kelly's going to see, like, you know, uh, <laughs> Looks like a big old like hickey or something coming up on my forehead. <laughs> yeah, that's well, gonna you happen. Look good. Well, thank you. The end product came out well. <laughs> so well, you know. Thanks. Don't get too close. You may see remnants of toothpaste. And <laughs> I'm gonna burns. start doing the same makeup checks on you that you do on me right before well, we go on camera. I just like, so everybody knows I had to clean you lipstick did. off her face. I, I know I thought lipstick I did it. on your cheek. I don't know. How does that I'm not quite sure happen? Did Justin wear lipstick this morning and give you a kiss goodbye? No. 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 <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Justin will kill me for saying that. Well. What are we talking about today? Well, <clears throat> we are going to be, uh, the title of this week's show is called Spending Spree. Because we are like on to, to, we're getting through this uh, emotional intelligence model. Again, why we're talking so much, dedicating so much time to this emotional intelligence topic, uh, subject, categories, is because on this show, we talk about finances and the details of different financial tools, but we also talk about how to be empowered to use them. And so if your psychology, if your if your headspace, if your um Ability to process information, what you think about yourself, how you express yourself, how you manage stress, how you make decisions. Um, That all relates to money because what we've used as an illustration um, on multiple shows is you have people who have win the lottery and they go bankrupt because they don't know how to handle it. They don't have the tools on the empowerment side to make it work for them. Um, and probably not every single person who ever wins the sure, lottery, but yeah. certainly the majority sure. or come into a windfall of wealth. So right. it's not just about having money. And then we've also talked on the other side of the spectrum um, that there's so, you know, there's quite a few financial planners or advisors out there that know all the technical knowledge, but don't have the empowerment side of some emotional intelligence, how they treat money, what they think about themselves, what they think about money, how they make decisions, because they don't have the wealth you would think they would. 
by knowing all the technical skills. So on this show, we really have those two tracks. We have a financial okay. track and an empowerment track. Right. And so, are you empowering me today to go on a shopping spree? Because I'm in for that. I'm just... <laughs> well, and that's why this these three topics under decision making are some of my favorite. I think because we finally moved out of my like <laughs> not wheelhouse of emotional expression. Oh, so you go like these next. Three. So these next, yeah. the last two categories, okay. I feel like. I love because I'm probably, I feel like I'm better at them. Impulse control is in here. Yes, it is. So today we're going to be so talking no about decision making, hence shopping spree or spending spree. Impulse control is what we are going to talk about today. Okay. Reality testing hmm. and problem solving. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure that many of you out there, I know it's hit us and we've spent hours upon hours on certain decisions recently. Oh, gosh. Um, I think, and we talked about this on several shows, about just how rapid fire we're all, and pressure we're all under, to make significant decisions every day. Yes. Um, in the last 18 months, it's, it's, it's changed of what type of decisions we have to make. But in 2020, because COVID was changing the landscape daily, hourly, right. you always had to be this rapid fire of, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Am I going to send my kids to school? Am I going to do this? Or, you know, like, yeah. am I going to go to the grocery store? Am I going to go out yeah. of my house? Am I staying, you know, like yeah. all of these different decisions that maybe isolated weren't that big of a deal, but the just the piling up sure. made everything so um, intimidating yeah. and overwhelming. And so uh, well, now, twenty twenty one did not disappoint on that side either. It did not. It's just a different. And now type. it's now it's a different type. Yeah, and um, you know, there's been several decisions that you know we've both had to make, and um, around several factors that has just been really heavy because it's hard <laughs> to find truth out there right now. Or you're paralyzed between two decisions because. Both side feels like a lose lose. So you're like, <laughs> how do I problem solve when both options don't sound like a win? I know, I know. Nor it's, do I really. I can't decide either way. So I'm, it's like being. It's paralyzing. Well, and it, we made a joke last week about our sanity, but it really does mess with it. It does. That's why I'm taking a half day off <laughs> today after this podcast. <laughs> Which is why I was a little scared to ask how your morning was. I know, but, but it's all good. You're good. Yeah, you're 85 percent apparently. <laughs> That's what my husband says. <laughs> 85%. 85%. Um, Glass half full. <laughs> totally. Or 85% full. So, so we're going to kick yeah. off decision making. Uh, what do you think? And, you know, I'll, I'll share first. One of the hardest decisions I think over the past 30 days I've had to make is around uh, getting vaccinated or not. Mm -hmm. It's a hard decision. I know some yeah. people out there, it's not a hard decision. Right. Great. For me, it was. <clears throat> And I really only wanted to make it out of a health decision. I didn't want pressure to apply. Right. I didn't want, um, you know, and, and we know I've talked about my personality. If someone tells me to do something, I'm less likely to do it just <laughs> because you're telling me to. So having to like separate that out. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's probably the largest uh, decision I've had to make in the last month because I felt like, you know, as specifically as it hit my inner circle. So yeah. not my household, but colleagues, work colleagues. I mean, everyone, uh, so many people in our community yeah. over the last two weeks have all come down with COVID. Yeah. Um, and even the most healthy individuals, it's hit them harder than I expected it sure. would hit them. And so it made me really settle down and say, okay, it's time to make a decision for me. And so I did. I, I won't share what decision I made because I don't want judgment oh to gosh. be part of the show. <laughs> Is anybody wondering? <laughs> But I finally made the decision, let's say that, yeah. and I feel really at peace about it. Yeah. And so I'm thankful that that's behind me because it can be somewhat overwhelming for some. <laughs> I'm not caught yeah, for some totally it is. Are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. That's okay. So, so when problem solving is the first skill around decision making, yeah. because decision making, obviously, you usually have multiple options. And what we've learned from EQ is that if you have more than seven pieces of information that you're considering, you you're, you have too much. You'll yeah. overwhelm yourself and paralyze well, that's yourself. That's like the max. That's the max right? is seven. Yeah. And so that's good to know because sometimes, especially now, like let's take my scenario with the vaccine. There are, it feels like hundreds of pieces of information that is really hard to test the validity of. Hence being, being um, paralyzed. Absolutely. Because it's too much to process. Yes. And, every, it, and it keeps changing. 
Every day. Every day. Yeah. And so, you know, so it can get quite overwhelming. And so, you know, if you're well adjusted in your problem solving, like some people don't know what I'm talking about because they have no problem making decisions. I don't think that's the majority anymore. <laughs> I have a question but, real quick. Yeah. I like Just it. because I wanted to. <laughs> um, what When you say well adjusted, <clears throat> we've said that through several sure. shows. Explain that so that so our list, the listener understands yes. what that means. So um, when I say well adjusted, because I've taken the assessment, you can say you can see on a comparative scale uh, from the um, you know thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have taken this assessment, um, the norm is around a certain score. And so you kind of you so if the <clears throat> if the population size average is is a certain number. Then you, if the closer you are to that average, the the more well adjusted you are. If you're a standard deviation away in either direction, maybe you're a little too low, maybe you're too high. If you're several standard deviations, which which means which say means what? Yeah. say if the average <clears throat> is a hundred, you know, and the sta- standard deviation is five. Every five points below a hundred on your assessment means you're a little low on that skill. Okay. Every five points above that a hundred. Okay. So again, it gives you a numeric value. That's that's studied, that's statistical um, in nature and valid, so that you can say, okay, you know, where do I rank here? And it and, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter about ranking, but you know this about yourself. Yeah. So some people who tend to get paralyzed in decision making, you're going to hear what I'm talking about, and you're going to be like, oh, I already know I'm low. You know, like I'm yeah, low on problem like this solving. One, you so probably know where you land. Yes. Yes. I think when I just when we describe them today. This probably is more so uh, because you see it play out in your everyday life. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even more so than, you know, your self-regard gets a little sneaky. Some of these get, it is. you know, self-actualization yeah. is a little sneaky because yeah. we don't all have the reality, the true reality of what we really think about ourselves. So when, when we talk about today reality testing and impulse mm-hmm. control, when I describe the highs and lows, you're going to be like, oh, that's me. Well, and you know what I really like about this assessment that is a little bit different from other assessments I've done, or at least the ones I'm familiar with, you, I like how it breaks down. So it tells me what my score means and it's not putting me in a box. Totally. It tells me what my score means. It also tells me how that can impact my work life because just, I mean, because we often do this to to assess how we're also performing at work. Um, But I don't know if performing is the right word. Would Justin slap my hand for that one? <laughs> um, and then strategies for action. Mm-hmm. So I like how it it breaks down what it means, the impact, and what I can do about it. Mm-hmm. And then also shows me at the bottom how that kind of interacts with some other yeah. uh, of my scores within EQ. I, Absolutely. That's what I love about this because you're not like, okay, I'm this number. If if you know, a listener may think, okay, great, so I know my number, and then what? That's right. what I like about this. Well, and your sh- every every sheet is customized to where you For are. You, like it tells so my, your you. tips are different than my tips, right. which is really handy because it's you know I read this and I'm like, okay, that resonate. Number one, it resonates, which helps me with the validity of it. Yep. Number two, it does. It gives you practical things of what you're doing well, what to be w- mindful, mindful or watchful of. for, and then how to continue to improve in it. Yeah. Hence the empowerment part. Like of it. it gives you yeah. positives and negatives. It's not yes. all oh you're low in this. You need oh, to you change suck. all these things. Or, Basically, oh, you're an you're arrogant. S- yeah, right. But <laughs> it gives you it, it, and it tells you your social implications, sure. your behavioral implications, yeah. so that you are once you've identified it, and you see it, you're mindful of it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this isn't overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It might look oh, it's my score. It may look overwhelming, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's not. It's really not that overwhelming. Yes, I like it absolutely. So, and what I also like is, you know, emotions are a part of each of these because our emotions play into everything we do and who we are, but it also kind of helps to gauge how much emotion should be a part of some of these skills. Yeah. Um, Because we all know that when we are all overwhelmed with emotion, we start to get cloudy. Very. Similar if we uh, discount them altogether. We get equally as cloudy. Yeah. And so... You know, yeah, I think because you Justin pointed that out real well mm-hmm. to us. It's a data point. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be the only and it can't be the strongest. Yeah. But it's that really helped me, especially this week and last week, as mm-hmm. I'm trying to make a certain decision sure. that he when we were in that meeting together, he was able to in what well, we were talking about problem solving mm-hmm. and reality testing, which we'll get to. I was making some points, Mm -hmm. at least for me, that seem like data. Mm -hmm. And he helped me go, you know what, I wouldn't include that as a data point, and here's why. Mm -hmm. And that helped me because my problem solving is in this certain area right now is very cloudy Mm -hmm. because it is so emotionally fueled. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thought that was really 
cool how he he outlined what data points should be, how they are. Emotions aren't wrong, but not everything. Absolutely. Yeah. And think about your financial decisions that you have to make. Yeah. I mean, these are these are practical skills in your relationships and in your finances because, you know, if you're going to, you know, buy a new house or get into the rental space mm-hmm. or, you know, make different financial investments, you have to go through a process yeah. to really know um you know, how you feel about it. You can't just always listen to your initial gut. Right. You know, because sometimes you, you don't get trust in trouble. Your gut. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're too emotional, can yeah. you trust your gut? If you're overly emotional. Well, and if you have low self regard, right. you don't trust True. your gut. Again, how they all So kind of it, it, there's together. so many dynamics. Yeah. Again, we just talked about that soundboard. Yeah. All of these things are little knobs that need adjusting over time. Um, and different different scenarios will, will play out a little differently. So as we kick off problem solving, yep. here's a couple tips out there if you want to know, kind of, you know, if you're on the more well adjusted side of how you do problem solve. Um, you see emotional information as, as playing a pivotal role, but you're not sidetracked by it. So emotions play a role. You're not discounting how you feel about something, how you're going to feel about something, what the emotion implications are, but you're not, you're not distracted to a point where it overwhelms you okay. or paralyzes you. Mm-hmm. You work through the many steps of problem solving without being emotionally distracted. Like you can focus. You don't get, again, distracted, sidetracked. You tend to stick with a problem until a solution is reached. Okay. That's that's a hard one. You know, I think sometimes we, we chew on something so long and we're just like, I'm so tired of this. Yeah. You know, and then we put it on the shelf. But what happens when we put it on the shelf is it just stews. Yeah. It can and take the away sleep. To it make can the take decision. away. I mean, yep. you know. It wakes you up at one thirty in the morning. <laughs> Hence your 85%. Hence my 85% today. <laughs> um, and then lastly... Your emotions rarely inhibit your decisions, but be wary not to overlook emotional messages when making a quick decision. So this, so again, it's like the, what emotions are doing because emotions can also protect you. Mm-hmm. You know, so emotions. If if you are saying, "Oh man, I really need to do this," but you have this like, "Oh, but uh, I don't know," a little strife to it. Mm-hmm. Don't make the decision yet. I really do firmly believe you're going to feel best about the de- decisions you make if you're led by peace. If you don't have a piece, piece about a decision yet, it's not you're not ready yet. Agreed. I would say though where that can be challenging mm-hmm. is if you are let's say it's a financial decision or yeah. it's a relational decision. You might be on a family, timeline or a deadline. A, if for you're sure. on a timeline deadline and that there can be implications. Yeah. And sometimes there's what if what what happens when peace doesn't come? We can't. That's a loaded question. I'm not saying we answer. Sure. But sometimes n- n- neither have a peace. As, yeah. And I feel like I feel like this is a little bit difference between you and I. For mm-hmm. somebody, I am higher on the F mm-hmm. on Myers Briggs. Um, we won't get into that. But so I'm a very I'm more You're of a, a feeler. strong feeler. Yes. So when I'm searching for peace, and I'm so emotional, this decision is emotionally fueled. It's hard to find it. Yeah. At all. That, so that's a good that point. one, I feel like somebody, you're more of a thinker. Yeah. At least from my experience. Yes. That's a, that's a better gauge. It's a gauge. It's a good gauge for everyone, but I feel like it's if easier for a If you're a strong a feeler, for sure, yeah. it's going to be harder to make decisions because yeah. emotions are more uh, pronounced yeah. in your world. Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, and when you study, you know, like CEOs of companies are typically statistically more thinkers because they don't, they can... Rapid fire decision making mm-hmm. a little bit. Now yeah. they have to be careful on the other side of not making cold hearted sure. decisions and not, you know, um, ignoring feelings uh, or being impersonal about it. But, um, you know, and, and also I think one thing to be mindful of is no one wants, you know, you don't want to run the risk of like fixating on a problem so much that sometimes the solution just is not available yet. Some people have like huh. that checklist that they just want to check the box, that they just force a decision. When sure. you know what I mean. When when if there's an option to wait until you have the facts that you feel like you need, wait. Okay, so that be somebody who is too high on problem solving, too if, high and too low. I would say uh, too high. Okay, if you're too high in problem solving, you're going to sometimes make a decision just to make a decision, just to be over with it. You know, just to check okay. the box instead of like taking time to consider. I'll think, what are you looking at? Your score. <laughs> oh yeah, I I do okay on this, <laughs> but just because I don't I'm know. Cheating. <laughs> I'm cheating. But and and I'll talk through you know a little bit of what I do. And I actually walked a client through the same thing yesterday, and 
he actually found value of it. So I'll share the story. Oh, good. Um, and so it's a, it's this client had an emotion, uh, a uh, financial decision, but he he's you know emotions are kind of hard to process sometimes. So what I like to do when I am going through something that I just I, I don't, I need to wrestle with it a little bit because yep. it's not obvious. Okay. What I do is, and I've done this for decades. Oh, are and you about it's to really tell me about the lip? Well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so I may, I get a sheet of paper. <laughs> I draw a line down the center. I have pros on one side and cons on one side. This is so funny to me. And I list pros, like why do I want to make this decision? Uh, you know, why do I want to make this investment or get this thing or Which whatever. Which most people make these lists, but I love you, what you're about to add. Oh, yes. It's the adding part yeah. of my version of this. Yeah. Um, so, And then I list all the cons of, you know, what could impact me negatively about this decision. And then here's the secret sauce, people. Then you have to wait. Tune in. Like wait, like like you have to give weight to each of those pros and cons separately. So you you make the list, but then you give it each a score of one to ten. Ten being it's the most important thing to you. One being eh, it doesn't really matter. And you score each pro, you score each con with a one through a ten. And then you add the scores. This is how she makes decisions. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have like 20 versus a 15. And so if the pro side is 20 and the con side is 15, you know that you're leaning towards doing it because there's more pros than cons. Sure. Cause and the- then you can, and then for me, why it's helpful, because then I know how I feel about that outcome. Yeah. And okay. I'm like, oh, I do want to do this. It helps me to kind of, because emotions are a little harder for me to navigate because mm-hmm. I don't like... I try to avoid them at all costs, let's just be honest. And so I don't like live there very often. So this helps me like, okay, look at the scores. Do those feel valid? Like, do I feel good? Like when I think about, oh, okay, there are more pros. I feel better about it than I feel doubtful about it. So I'm going to move forward. It helps empower me to know what to do and how I really feel about it from an emotional perspective. Well, I'm grateful that you do this because, little rabbit trail story, when Shannon was moving back from Texas to Colorado, That's right. she made this list. <clears throat> I just learned this the other day. And I uh, was on the pro list, obviously, <laughs> to move back to you Colorado. You were 10 on the pro I list. I was going to say it. Oh, I always do that to you. You Why are you my friend? <laughs> Still in the thunder. Dang I was it. a 10. I'm going to say it anyway. I was a 10. a 10. You were a 10. And what's funny is, you know, like I, I have a journal. I don't journal, but I have a journal. Do you know what's in my journal is a, like don't thirty journal. of these pros and cons lists. That's right. like that's how that's I what journal. You use your journal. <laughs> that's how I make decisions. Yeah, but yeah. So I'm glad I was a ten. Anyways, yes, I just were. needed to point that out. So problem solving. Um, and again, if you are too low in problem solving, you're not going to. You're going to get so overwhelmed and have a hundred facts in front of you, quote facts. Some might be facts, some might not be facts, and you're going to paralyze yourself. Well, and you're going to not spend being able to make a decision. most of your time and energy worrying about it than you will trying to solve it. Oh, that's a good point. You Just will. FYI out there, if you think you're low and you worry <laughs> about stuff more than try to solve it, you have a friend in me. <laughs> And you might not feel like you could ever get enough facts well, to make the you're, decision. Oh, you're trying to take in as many facts as possible to make the decision for you. Because that's another sign that you might be lower. Mm-hmm. is because you need somebody to make a decision for you. <laughs> and so you'll spend hours on end mm-hmm. um, worrying and taking, like, you're going to find that one data point that <laughs> finally cinches it for you. <laughs> Let me help you. It's probably not going to come. Do you um, think do you think because you're trying to avoid regret or what are you yes, trying to ultimately absolutely. avoid? You're you're trying to avoid regret okay. and your it, 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 that will make the decision for you. So you didn't really make the decision, that data point made it for you. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. So and a person's not making it for you, but a data point no, is No, because there it are for some you. decisions that you that nobody can make for you. And so you are looking for that piece of information that makes it for Mm -hmm. you because you don't want to regret making it. Gotcha. And if something seals the deal for you, then the chance, then you're like 100% there's not going to be any regrets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you know, that side of the fence pretty well. You know, (laughs) not that that you spend any time there. Pretty sure. (laughs) Or you get a bossy best friend like me who usually can tell you what to do, but in certain cases, everything. Sometimes you can, sometimes you (laughs) can. So, well, sometimes I am like, just tell me what to do. <laughs> just tell me what to do. 
Um, and I will when I feel ethically okay about it. But then for sometimes sure. I don't. Yeah. Hence um, this week. But problem solving, it's a tricky one. It's it a, is. I feel like it's one of the loaded, uh, most loaded skills in this whole compilation mm-hmm. of the five categories of emotional intelligence. So. Well, and if you're low out there, just a quick, and we're spending some time on this, we but are, I feel like this is somebody. It's, it's, it's more is, subjective. It's yeah. harder to nail down. Well, and I feel like this is something that everyone, especially right now, yeah. um, could benefit from. If if you are low on this, try to take like what you said earlier, instead of seven mm-hmm. options, get it like down to three. Yeah. Like my pros cons list for my yeah. vaccine decision was had three. I had to just focus on three yeah. each, three pros, three cons. And yeah. then I scored. Them. And then you scored. My scores just ended up all dead even. So <laughs> Hence, that didn't help. That didn't no. help either. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyways, all right. Okay. So the some of the reasons that you just described yep. goes segues into like the next one. skill. Yeah, this yep. is a fun one. The next two are, are because they can be so explosive, mm-hmm. and they can I mean they can throw you off the rails quick. Um, the next one is reality testing. Mm-hmm. So reality testing is just like it sounds. You know, it's the ability to. Um, to have the capacity to remain objective by seeing things as they really are. It involves recognizing when emotions or personal biases can cause one to be less objective. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how well is your perception true reality? Right. Or Instead you make of some it up like fantasy land right. that's not backed up. The worst possible scenario. <laughs> worst case scenario or, or even best, the best case. case like, are you not looking at the facts? Right. Um, that have some weight to them. And so, you know, reality testing, we all get caught up in both, Mm -hmm. depending on what it is. Yeah. You know, I think financially, people have a harder time finding their true reality, to be honest, Mm -hmm. because either they, you have, and usually each spouse in a marriage is different. Mm -hmm. We'll have one spouse that makes a reality that's far rosier than what their bank account would say. Sure. Um, But then you have another that it says it's like doomsday and you can't spend a dime yeah. <laughs> on the same bank account. Yeah. And so um, on the financial side, I find uh, the reality testing is usually all over the map, um, which is very difficult. Uh, if you are too high in reality testing, you can imagine you are um, you you rely too much on logic and evidence. So reality testing. So if it's too high, you are very logical only. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. If it's too high, have... um, you don't want to really involve emotions at all. Um, huh. You're less creative. You're more like, well, if the spreadsheet doesn't say, you know, like there's no dreaming there's no you know uh, goals there's no you know it all has to be so factual like I cannot move until I have this very exact dollar amount in my account you know like think about taking trying to take a step of faith in something sure and if you're too high in reality testing you're like well until I see it I'm not moving well and that's not how faith works right and so if you're too low in reality testing, these are more of the, the fun cases because you, you live in fantasy land. Like if you're low in reality testing, sure. you make up whatever reality either helps you or is hindering you at the time. It's not it's not true. It's not factual. It's mm-hmm. more based on emotion. Sure. And what we're seeing is if emotion, if the mix gets too emotional, it throws us off. Yeah. We talk about this in decision making for finances. If your emotions are fueling your decisions only, then you will paint false realities all day long. Well, and you're it's always going to be, I think especially if you maybe are low in self-regard mm-hmm. or you're low in self-actualization and mm-hmm. you're low in reality testing, I'm just yeah. guessing, but you're probably living in fear and anxiety a lot. Yeah. Kind of in a doomsday. And there are other ones that we haven't gone over yet yeah. that would also feed into that. But kind of everything is doomsday. Mm -hmm. Everything is the worst case scenario. Oh, yeah. And if you're high in emotional expression, guess what's coming out of your mouth constantly? You're vomiting your emotions (laughs) all over everybody all the time. You're like the Debbie Downer of the group who is like. You're the wet blanket. Yeah. You're You're like, life is horrible. (laughs) It's 
oh, I just, um, I think I'm getting sick. I think I'm, you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> doomsday. I have a sore throat or I have some drainage. I think I have COVID. <laughs> like, and how many of us have done well, that? Well, we're all, I, I, I mean, be, <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who's not guilty of that. Hello, Guilty. Yes. I'm how like, many times do you think you've recovered from COVID? Oh, I swear. <laughs> I think I've had COVID 10 times. Like, I'm like, oh my God, my throat tickles. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But oh anyways, gosh, okay, yeah. That's, that's so reality funny. testing has been very challenging for all of us. It has been. It but has but been. to be fair, it was kind of hard to know what reality was for Absolutely. the past year based on all yes. of so the So what's our goal? So what's the goal of reality yeah. testing? Where do we want to all be? We want to be that we we <clears throat> we don't want to misinterpret critical information or allow emotions to color reality too much. So it's kind of like in this middle. Like we don't want to be overly critical and logical, but we mm-hmm. don't want to be overly colored with emotion. So it's it's kind of both. We want to consider emotion and consider logic. And I do find that typically in life you have friends that are your more logical friends and you have friends that are your more like when you've had a bad day and you just need to spew, you probably go to your emotional friends more for that. No, I go to you. <laughs> Well, we I are sp- each other's world. I so. spew on you. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a t-shirt. <laughs> I, know, <that's> so <laughs> um, I come here on Thursday mornings to laugh, just so I everybody know. knows. If no one else laughs, we laugh. We're laughing too um, with each other. If you're well adjusted, you're keenly yeah. aware of your own strengths and weaknesses. So, and I do believe that that is what we're trying to do here: is that self self awareness piece. Of, you know, knowing that maybe on your side, emotions play Mm -hmm. too much of a role sometimes. Knowing on my side, they don't play enough of a role sometimes. Realizing that and recognizing that so you can make different decisions. Um, And then the last well-adjusted tip is you are attuned to your immediate environment and attentive to the task at hand. So sometimes I think what sidetracks our decision making, we let it get like way out there when the decision, the task at hand is really what we need to focus on. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so dialing it down, sometimes life gets so overwhelming uh, that you just need to break it down back to 24 hour increments. Oh, maybe like or four hour. hour. Yeah. I mean, like if it gets real overwhelming, yeah. 15 minute, 15 minute increments, uh, you know, so, and then we'll, we'll finish next week on the impulse control. Because you can see how that could lend here. Because if you are painting a false reality, like your bank account is that of, you know, the Kardashians, then you want to spend money like the Kardashians. But then quickly you will realize when those bills come in the mail that you don't have the money to pay them. Yeah. Um, And so I like how you use the Kardashians as an example. Well, and I, yeah, I don't know why. Well, they spend a lot. (laughs) Probably is why. They have a lot. They They do have a lot. lot. Yeah. Yeah. But if, uh, but if I'm spending like that, knowing that my bank account probably doesn't match the size of theirs, eh, I want to pay, I just want to make sure my reality is valid and true. Yeah. Not what I want it to be or wish it would be or, you know, what have you. So if your bank account is the Kardashians, (laughs) we're going on a spending spree. (laughs) <laughs> Hence the title of the show. Totally. I'm just kidding. So we will focus more on that next week as we wrap up decision making. Yep. Hopefully there won't be any more monumental decisions in our lives the next week, but we'll see. Oh, I'm Maybe. sure mine will. <laughs> um, okay, but before we go, okay. I have an assignment. Yes. Chris told me to do this, so I'm this. I'm going to get better at this every week. <laughs> We're here every Thursday morning addressing your questions, having fun we as are. we discuss we important financial issues. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, KVOR, AM streams, wherever you listen to podcasts. Where do you listen to podcasts mostly? Apple. Me too. Um, but... We really want you to leave us a comment. We want to hear yes. from you. So um, you can find us on copytalkpodcast.com. Chris says I say that too fast every week. So copytalkpodcast.com. That's our website. It's being loaded with tons of resources, um, things, support That's links, right. invite, access to services that will be coming down the pike mm-hmm. soon. Um, you can check us out on our Instagram page. Send us and a- the most fun, I think, our YouTube channel. And our YouTube like channel, yes, best. which I was... <laughs> I know. You see this? The part in red. That's what I was trying to get to. That's twice today. (laughs) And now you can find us on YouTube. That's right. (laughs) Get to the bottom of it, lady. (laughs) Chris is going to kill me. I'm a bottom liner. I know. I'm sorry. You know what? 
you know, I'm a rule follower. <laughs> this is my page. Okay, so anyways, I'm. That's I, how you can. So find like us. us, follow so, us, leave us a comment, yes. ring the bell. We'll see you Amen, next week, sister. everyone. Have a good week. <laughs> This is intended for informational purposes only and not to be used as a primary basis for investment decisions. Consult your financial professional before making investment decisions. Shannon Ross is a registered representative and MBA of Lighthouse Financial. Lighthouse Financial offers securities and advisory services through Cambridge Investment Research Advisories Incorporated. Member FINRA and SIPC. Shannon is CEO and managing financial partner of Lighthouse Financial. Cambridge and Lighthouse Financial are not affiliated.